Uh, security, escort this gentleman out, please. Come on, Soda Pop, let's go. Mary Huther. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I was trying to uh, figure out when was the last time I was here at, uh, at Forum, and it's been a long, long time, Tom. Uh, I think it was right before uh, the election uh, when I came back to Forum to try to uh, you know, earn your confidence to, to serve another four years, and, and it's great to be back. So, so thank you for inviting me back. I, I appreciate it. Uh, this is a group that's very, very passionate, I know. Uh, on all kinds of different topics. Uh, I also know that. And uh, I guess all I'd ask is that if you want me to come back uh, again and again and again, I'm, I'm here for you. I am, I am your mayor, at least for those folks who, who live in Sioux Falls, I'm your mayor. And I'm still having a blast of doing it. Uh, I really am. Uh, it's, uh, it was a long time dream of mine to, to serve, and uh, ultimately it's, uh, it's been everything that I wanted and, and more. Uh, I do have a presentation. And it's not to bore you, it's not intended to bore you. It's trying to give you a, a little flavor of some of the things that we've, we've tackled already, kind of giving an update on that. But also, you know, I do have a little less than two years to go. And uh, with the help of you know, all of you, with the help of uh, city council, some of them are actually here today. I see Councilor Knightsford, to Councilor Staley uh, is here. I'd like to welcome them. Uh, I, and I don't know if there's another councilor here or not, but, but I also want to kind of give you a flavor of some of the things that, that I would love to help tackle uh, with the help of the counselors, with the help of the citizens. And, and uh, some of the stuff you may cheer for and other stuff you may boo me on. And I, I respect it all. And I, and I know this group, there's occasional boos every now and then. And, and uh, so, so let, let's have some fun. I, I still think there is plenty to accomplish yet in, in the city of Sioux Falls. So let's just talk about a couple of things. Number one, you know my style. When I was elected, I made a commitment to you that if I was elected, the very first thing we were going to do, we were going to focus on the foundation of this town, the infrastructure. And uh, yep, I, I think it was dramatically challenged uh, uh, right, uh, you know, when before I came in. Uh, but we spent a, a ton of money on these some of these boring things, water lines, sewer lines, and you remember that monster that sewage line collapse that happened up by the prison and and the risk that we had uh, with that. Uh, you know, whether it be, you know, some of those other things like those bike trails, those roads, city buildings, yes, and even technology. Folks, we were using technology from the 80s. Uh, now, we've invested in technology in, in a grand, grand way, and uh, that's good because it'll help, it'll help our government be more efficient and more productive. Roads. Roads is a big deal for me. I know it's a big deal for you. Whoever wants to be the next mayor, I've just got some advice for them. Uh, roads is a big deal in the stop. They're a big deal in the summer, and they're a big deal in the winter. And you basically, you want them the same regardless of the month. Uh, you want them fast, you want them smooth, you want them safe, uh, and that's the way that it is. We have invested, uh, since I was elected, $271 million of your money. Uh, now, next time you go out to Spearfish, just imagine this. Take off from Sioux Falls, head to Spearfish. That's how many roads that we have rebuilt since just 2010. Uh, and there's more to go. There, there are, there's more to go. We just completed a study of every single road in our town. Uh, no kidding, we know every nook, every cre uh, cranny, every crevice in our city, we know. We've, we've done that uh, to try to get an objective view of our roads. And uh, we like what we found. 4% uh, of our roads are what we call a backlog situation. They're in, they're in need of repair now. Uh, and uh, so our goal is now to take our taxpayer dollars and to attack not only those roads, but stay one step ahead of growth at the same time. And uh, uh, when I'm done with this meeting, I'm going to go back and work on my presentation for Tuesday with the city budget. And uh, you're going to see that it's going to be, a, a, I think, a, a pretty boring city budget. But it's going to focus a lot right here, again, on some of those, uh, those roads, those infrastructure needs that we have. Not everybody likes this. In fact, yeah, you know, I, I, I get it. But folks, you have to understand, I, I come from a business background. I do. It is. And, and you can't take it away from me. I'm sorry. 
It was 25 years of business, uh, you know, built into my brain, and I am trying to run your city government like a business. I am, uh, and and I think it should be. I think our state government should be run like a business. I think our federal government should be run like a business. And I think our city government is being run like a business, at least while I'm in there. And, and again, just some of the things, when, when I got in there, I, the, almost everybody had an, had, a, had an iPhone or a cell phone. Uh, we had every department head, this is going to sound stupid, but we had every department head, they were, this, they were ordering their own toilet paper and their own supplies. That makes no sense. It makes no sense at all. Uh, because you're, it's a simple example of how you're not getting the biggest bang for the taxpayer buck. You know, there are, it makes sense to centralize certain things, to, be, to get you know, that value-oriented uh, 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 kind of deals that you want. Uh, and, and so those are just some of the things that we've tackled, and there's more to come. And I think in this next budget presentation that I'm going to give, I'm going to give the council and all the citizens just an idea of how far we've come in seven years in terms of making your government more efficient, more productive, and getting a bigger bang for your taxpayer dollar. Uh, and then adding uh, money to the piggy bank is a good thing. It is. We do budget and we're going to take some of that reserve money every year, and we've not done that. Uh, this year we may take some of that reserve money out. However, we do have a good piggy bank. Uh, in the city of Sioux Falls, we want at least 25% uh, of reserve in our uh, of an operating reserve, that's really unheard of around around America. But in Sioux Falls, we want that. Uh, that's a good deal. Uh, you know, we had, we had an ice storm. Just all of a sudden, it came out of nowhere in, in one April. Well, we had enough money uh, if we needed to fund that the the recovery efforts. We had enough money to do that. Uh, it's a really nice piggy bank. It's a it's a really nice uh, set of dollars to have just in case we we were to need it. And then again, project management, management technology, and, and all that stuff is, is important. This is important too. The citizens are the customer, not the government. That's the way that it is. You folks, we are supposed to be serving you. You folks aren't supposed to be serving government. And I think that I'll give you example upon example of how we, we, we've been doing that effectively. Uh, now, uh, also, you, I think you also know my style. I've not been afraid, uh, with the help of the, the city team, to really tackle some things that, that are really, really tough. Uh, let me start. The one, the one thing that just doesn't get any attention, and I think it truly is one of the biggest things that we've done as, as a city, was we dealt with, we actually tackled pension reform. We did. Where's all the media stories on this pension reform? Where, where is it? No one wants to talk about it. No, we actually tackled pension reform in the city of Sioux Falls. We got all these union employees working in collaboration with others. We came together, we compromised, we communicated, we found common ground, and we actually negotiated a deal that is going to save you $300 million over the next 25 years. How many of you actually knew about it? Not many. Thank you, Tim. Thank you. Tim did. I love it. Thank you, Tim. Uh, and, and, and I really appreciate it. And, and again, that was, there's always, we always talk about the battles that unions have. No, actually, if you work with the union, you can actually find good common ground. You can work in collaboration to make good things happen. You can, can't you? Yes, you can. Uh, you, you can. And, and so that's a big deal. Code enforcement, I, I you know, Councillor Staley and I sometimes, we, we disagree in terms of the how I present this. But folks, I'm a good neighbor person. To me, everybody should be held accountable if they're not being a good neighbor. And, and again, we all have definitions of a good neighbor and a bad neighbor. But in my, in, where I come from, at a minimum, you should at least be following the basic codes, the basic policies of your city. Okay, so please mow your lawn. It, it, it shouldn't be higher than eight inches. Get rid of that junky car if it doesn't have a license plate on it. You know, do things like that because guess what? You all know it. I've got I've got 99 good neighbors, and then I've got one bad one, and it screws everything up for the 99 good ones. It's just the way that it is. It, it, it is, and, and and so I. I really focused on this. Not everybody's happy with it, but I think it's the way it should be. And you find 
You find a better looking town than Sioux Falls, South Dakota right now. Just drive around. Our town is beautiful. It is beautiful. And I, I love it. Uh, delinquent accounts. This is no kidding, folks. We actually, uh, uh, this in the city of Sioux Falls, we actually pick up garbage here. Isn't that crazy? There are firms who pick up garbage in the city of Sioux Falls. Well, we had these five firms that were picking up garbage. They were charging their customers. They were dropping the garbage off at your landfill. Uh, there, there was just one, one thing. They weren't paying their bills to the city of Sioux Falls. Five of them. I mean, does that make business sense? No, it doesn't. A, a church couldn't operate that way. A small business couldn't operate that way. A corporation couldn't operate that way. And certainly Sioux Falls City Government shouldn't operate that way either. <clears throat> but that was going on in your government, in your city. Right now, those four of those five accounts have been fully paid. There's one that is no longer in business. Uh, but we were able to recoup uh, a large share of those dollars. Not all, but a large share. Uh, but again, some of those basic things uh, that, that I think are important that, that we should tackle. The CBD bid review, oh boy, did I take a lot of heat on that. Did I ever? It's your money. It's your money. I don't, I don't know if you care about it. It's your money. It is. It's your taxpayer dollars. If you don't care how it's being spent, then fine. That's, that's, that's just fine. I actually do. I actually do. I think that we could get a greater return for your taxpayer dollars when it comes to the CVP bid than what we're getting. And so we gave it a shot. We gave it a shot. It didn't go as far as I had hoped, but we gave it a shot. We are making stuff happen. I don't want to get too deep into this, but they're called tax increment financing. It's, a, it's a, one of the few things that we have in the city government toolbox to try to stimulate activity. Uh, we've done more since I've been your mayor than we ever did prior. Uh, you know, for example, we've done 11 TIFs since I've been your mayor. Prior to that, we did nine. Most of them are in downtown Sioux Falls. Uh, those that are highlighted are, are where they occurred. Uh, now, they should be scrutinized at a high level. You shouldn't just hand out TIFs to everybody who wants a TIF. And again, I won't listen to special interest groups that I'm not going to be beholden to them. I won't. I won't. I won't. And you can't imagine the scrutiny that we go through with these TIFs. And in the development community, what happens more often than not, you know, you, they want, they're, they're business people. They want whatever you're willing to give them. And then in fact, if you give them something, they may want even more. Uh, that's one of the challenges that you have when you're the mayor or you're a city councilor. But we have used TIFs, we have used them wisely, and I think it's really made a big impact in, in our city. Downtown, uh, again, um, you know, I, I don't want to take you back to the debate of the event center because uh, we moved beyond that. But boy, it was one of the, it probably took five years off of my life, that, that event center vote. Uh, but it was all worth it. It was all worth it. You know the battle, downtown, out at the current lo the location, downtown. My dream for downtown Sioux Falls was just different. I've lived all over the country, I've traveled all over the world. My vision, my dream for downtown was just different. It, it was. I, I've seen downtowns where it's a good place to work. You know, eight to five, Monday through Friday. Oh, it's, it's popping, it's hopping. Then I've seen downtowns where it's a great place to play. You know, after five on Friday until about Sunday at, at noon. It's hopping, oh, that's great. My vision is different. If you want a vibrant downtown, one where your heart is pumping all the time, that's where you make it the place to what? Live. To live. Thank you. It's a place to live. If you want a vibrant downtown, you want to make it the place to live. And that's what we've done. We have. Look at this. Actually, and I know downtown Sioux Falls. When I was running to be your mayor the first time, most miserable winter we've ever had, I think, in the city's history, I went to every single business in downtown, every single building in downtown, every single floor in downtown, I could have lived on floors in downtown, and you folks would have never found me. You would have never found me. It was, it, was, it was really a struggling time, okay? Now, our downtown is just hopping. For example, residential vacancy rates was about 14% vacancy back in 2010. 
Now it's less than 2%. In fact, the Argus Leader, about three months ago, they said there's 10 places open to live in downtown Sioux Falls. 10, not 10%, 10. And we're building more and more places to live all the time in downtown. And, and that's why our downtown is exciting. If you haven't been downtown, come on downtown, especially on a Friday or Saturday night. You know, it's just, it's just wonderful. I mean, look at these. They're, it's the place to work, it's the place to play, and right now it certainly is the place to live. Life does happen. You know, since I've been your mayor, we've had six, six emergencies, six. And, uh, you know, I'm not gonna talk about climate change today or anything like that, but folks, since I've been your mayor, not only we had 100 year rains since I've been your mayor, we actually had a thousand year rain event, okay? Uh, then we also had things like a, a, a power explosion downtown. Uh, you all know about the ice storm uh, and, and all those things. Uh, uh, if we have another emergency, and the odds are good that we will, we're ready, we're ready. Okay, we've learned a lot uh, you know, over the last uh, six uh, emergencies. This is interesting, and, and I'm going to come back to this, but look at our unemployment rate, okay? Uh, this is real. Right now, it's actually, it's not 2.2%, it's 2.1%. Uh, and, and, and that's a great thing, and I know I'm at the Democratic Forum. It's a good thing, it's a great thing at the Democratic Forum when you have a 2.1% unemployment rate. Why? Because employers, if they want to get people to work there or to stay there, they have to pay more wages. That's a good thing. They have to uh, offer better benefits. That's a great thing. And they actually have to offer a great place to, to work, uh, to, to keep people. And again, I've got Councilor Neitzer and Councilor Staley here. I don't want to get into a debate with them. But one thing that you're going to find with this millennial generation, the millennials, okay? Uh, and not that I don't want to disregard the, the others, but let's just talk about the millennials a little bit. The people that were trying to have come work in Sioux Falls. They actually get a crap about work environment. They do. Good. Thanks for shaking your hands, uh, millennial person. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. They actually do. They, they actually do. It's real. I went to a ribbon cutting last night, uh, right there uh, in, in uh, downtown Sioux Falls on, on Main Street. They were named the, one of the top 30 places in America to work, okay? They really do care about what, what type of environment they provide for their employees. It's a big deal. And you want to know how high the ceilings were? Twice as high as this. There was light. There was activity. It was, it was dramatically different than what, we grew, than what we worked in. It was. And they actually want that, and they demand that uh, in today's work environment. You better pay attention, okay? And if you don't pay attention, then don't blame anybody when you've got a high, uh, 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 you're, you're, not as, you're not doing as well in, ter in terms of getting people to work there or getting people to stay there, or it's impacting your productivity, okay? It's a, it's a real deal. And we better pay attention, because we've got businesses, we've got corporations, we've got retail, we've got nonprofits that all have help wanted signs, and they can't fill the jobs. That's not good. That's not good. Uh, our quality of life, it, it, you know, it, again, I talk about infrastructure, but I also talk about quality of life as well. You know, the Sanford Sports Complex, not everybody agrees that that's a good investment. I think it's a fantastic investment. The Midcoe Aquatic Center, which is going to open up here in, in October, uh, it will be the best indoor aquatic facility for probably a thousand miles, and it's for everybody. It's not just for the swim teams; it's for everybody. It, as I get older, and I'm getting older, um, I, what, what you're finding is that in the olden days, when I would when I would try to recover from my injuries, I would do certain things. Now that I'm getting older, my doctor says, "Get in the dang water, Mike. Get in the water." Water is a big deal. It keeps us healthy, but it also can help us repair our body and things like that. I mean, I, 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 I'm just excited about it. If you haven't been in there, come on in. I think you're really going to enjoy it here soon. The River Greenway. And yes, snow gates. That's a quality of life investment. That is. That's a, you know, we've got folks that, um, 
that are looking at Sioux Falls in terms of a place to live, the thing that holds us back the most is the winter, is the winter. So when you invest in things that will improve the quality of life, even in the winter time, like a snow gate, that's a big deal. That's a big deal. Uh, again, more than 200 million bucks has been invested in quality of life since 2010. Uh, the event center, uh, I could talk about the event center all day, okay? To me, it's not the greatest thing that we've done uh, over the last uh, seven years, but it's a big deal. It's a big deal. It is the 100th busiest event center in the world. Say it louder. World. State world. State. In the world. The 100th busiest event center in the world. Thank you. Thank you. Love it. Nice job, team. <laughs> and and it, it, it's really doing quite well. It is operating in the black. That was a, that was a goal that I had expressed during the campaign. It's doing very, very well. And it's absolutely beautiful. It's beautiful on the inside. It's beautiful on the outside. It is a phenomenal $117 million investment that you folks made. And uh, also, it is capturing the attention of millennials, the active generation, folks from all over the, the country. It really is. Oh, by the way, Sir Paul McCartney. I don't know, did you hear? He was actually in Sioux Falls. Yeah. Okay. Sir Paul McCartney of the Beatles. Sir Paul. <laughs> he selected he Sioux Falls. Night, Sir night Paul. I mean, can you, th 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 there are actually folks talking about your city, your event center, talking about you, not only just in South Dakota, not only just in America, but they're actually talking about you across the, across the pond. Sir Paul, and he had a blast. He had a blast. Elton John had a blast here. Uh, the Eagles had a blast here. They love your event center, and they certainly love you. So what are we going to tackle next? Oh, with the help of, again, I got Councillor Staley, Councillor Neitzer. I don't expect that they're going to agree with everything that I'm going to say right now, but uh, if they ever want to know what my thoughts are on these things, don't worry, I'll let them know. <laughs> I'll let them know. I will. And we may agree to disagree, but I will let them know. And I will always treat them professionally. I will. I will. And I just ask the same from them. We're going to have these tough debates, this tough dialogue, this due diligence. I just want to be professional in the attempt. So here we go. Get ready, boo birds. Come on out. Get ready. Here we go. So here's, here's what we're going to tackle next at least over the next uh, year and a half that I, I, God willing, I have the, er, the honor to serve you as your mayor. I do want to go out the way that I came in. I talked about this. Uh, this is the 2010 actual budget uh, that we had when I first started. This is what I'm proposing. I'm proposing, counselors have not agreed to it yet. Here's what I'm proposing that we go out with. And look at this. It's almost a mirror image. It's so boring. Uh, I, Tom, I may pass out. It's so boring, this thing. But it is. It's streets and utilities, boring. It is a little bit of quality of life. Okay, that's the fun, sexy stuff that is. And then other. But it's, it's kind of a boring way to come in. It's a boring way to go out. But it is, certainly, it is the foundation of this town, folks. It is the foundation. The boring stuff is the foundation, and it is important. Uh, and I, and I want to make sure it's good, thank you. I want to make sure it's good for the next mayor as well. We need talented workers, we do, okay? I'm, I'm gonna go through this. This is one that I think is really interesting. The community college discussion. And Tom, I didn't, I didn't encourage you to get, come back and talk about this. You know, and again, I don't want to denigrate our state. You know I love our state, okay? But, the way we built our education system in South Dakota was really tailored towards four-year degrees. You know, we have, we have four-year colleges or, or universities all over the state, four years. Not every one of your kids, not every one of your grandkids, not all of you actually want a four-year degree. Some of you may want a two-year degree and then maybe get a four-year degree. But everything that we've pretty much done, not everything, sorry, that was probably too strong, but what we've really paid attention was those four-year degrees. We don't have community colleges in South Dakota. Really? And we're struggling trying to find workers. Okay, not everybody wants to get a social services degree uh, or become a doctor. Some people actually want to use their hands or, or want a two-year degree uh, to do something. 
and we need to start talking about this. Um, we really do, and, and I, I hope we're not too late. I hope we're not too late. The governor's working on it, the Board of Regents are working on it, the university presidents are working on it. So we're, we're in a catch-up mode here, but Tom, I would encourage the Democratic Forum, start talking about this, community colleges. Have yeah, anybody ever been to like Arizona, for example? There's, there's community colleges all over the place, and it's, it's a good deal. Um, you know, and I ask, I'd love to bring shop back. You know, the old days of shop? <laughs> shop, and where we made purses or billfolds or, or stu you know, stuff that we'd give to our grandma and grandpa that they, they put crap on, you know, stuff like that. I wish we would, because I think we need to. Because right now, we need workers who can use their hands, you know, could build stuff, uh, electrical, all that. And we don't, we can't find them. Cannot find them. Uh, one step ahead, uh, and, and, you know, we've had three years straight of record construction. Three years straight. Boom, boom, boom. Right now, we are ahead of our pace in where we were last year. It looks like we could actually break the record for a four straight year. And I know that there's some folks that are concerned about that, and I respect it. I, I, I was at Dow Rummel yesterday, and the folks there, they were wonderful. But some of them were going, you know, Mayor, we love your enthusiasm. You know, we love your positive energy. We love how our city is growing and, and capturing stuff. But one of these great, great uh, seniors, the active generation, looked at me and said, but Mayor, are, are we growing too fast? You know, are, are you worried about that? I think that's a good topic. But, but at the same time, you know, if, if we're not moving forward, we are probably falling behind. Uh, but right now, it looks like we have a chance to have four years of record-breaking construction. Four years. There's a, uh, there's a, a piece of land that was, has been in the floodplain over there by the, uh, by the mall for a long, long time. It comes out of the floodplain here in about uh, two, two, it's about two, two to three weeks. And all those properties have been sitting on the shelf, all those dreamers, they're going to come off. And then they're going to start to build things again. So that'll be fine. Uh, okay, get ready. Uh, counselors, I don't know if you're aware of this. Here's a little scoop for you. Um, uh, one thing that I'd really love to tackle uh, with a year and a half to go is... Um, uh, anything that I that, that I can do to help uh, alleviate smoking, uh, I, I want to try to do. I hate it. I hate it. I know my. I hate smoking. I killed my dad. Uh, he was 62. Uh, he, my dad drank like a fish. Uh, he smoked like a chimney. My dad gave up drinking. He didn't get off smoking. 62, uh, he was diagnosed with uh, lung cancer that metastasized his brain. He had a large walnut of cancer in his head. Uh, he was given at least a year to live, and then he dies the very next day. Uh, I hate smoking. It killed my dad. Uh, I want to work in collaboration with the city council to, to do one thing, and that is, in my mind, if it's a public property, if it's a public park, there should not be smoking there. And uh, and I know not everybody, you know, appreciates that. I okay, I, I get it. I know we're a libertarian state. I get it. I'm a I'm a, uh, I'm, a I'm a rights guy. You know, I'm a, sometimes I'm a live and let live guy. Okay, I get it. But to me. Uh, smoking it does no one any good. I, I know it's a it's a habit. It's hard to break. But at a minimum, I, yes, you should have the ability to smoke. But if it's a piece of public property that you folks own, I don't think you should be able to smoke there. Uh, more development. Uh, really excited. There's a uh, out by our new events center. Uh, there's you've you've all heard about the new uh, the new property, the new hotel, the new restaurant that's going to open up. There are actually two other pieces of property right there that, oh, we're just chopping at the bit to get our hands on. One is a piece of county property, and one is a piece of federal property. We have, government works slow, okay? And, and with this building thing, uh, you, you know what can happen. You know, two steps forward, a step back, one step forward, two steps back. That's government. I get it. I get it. But this county, you know, the county and federal property, we've been trying to get that for years, and it's so hard. 
but we're not going to give up. And if we can get our hands on that property, then it'll explode even more out by the event center. Uh, the new city services building. I'm going to take about one minute and talk about it. That's it. That's it. Uh, it is something, of course, that you, you know the city team has been working on collaboratively with the city council. Now, it's, it's real. We've got, uh, we've got an older city council uh, that is no longer you know, uh, a, a team. Uh, they voted to move the project forward. We've got a newer city council with some new members on it. Uh, they've made a recent decision that they would like to see that repealed. Uh, uh, whatever, whatever happens, uh, it, it, it is a need for our city. Uh, and it's been an identified need for our city for a long, long time. Uh, maybe not as long as the event center, maybe not as long as the indoor pool, maybe not as long as pension reform, maybe not as long as some of those things. But this has been an identified need for a long, long time. Uh, it has. And, and if you think the way that we're serving the citizens now is the most efficient, most tax taxpayer-friendly way, you're wrong. It's not. Folks, remember I told you, I want to try to run this government like a business. I want to make things happen in a most productive, efficient, and taxpayer-friendly way. This is one that we're not doing that, the way we're doing it today. As well as, folks, guess what? We actually do have employees, and we want to provide them with a good place to work so that they can uh, serve you in the most efficient, productive way as well. Uh, and, and folks, for all of you who have been told that this is the new city hall, no, it's not the new city hall. It is a, admin, it's a building where people work, where they serve, where they make good things happen. That's what it is. Uh, and it's gonna, be a, it's gonna be a nice one. It's gonna be one where it should create a ton of civic pride. And if there's one thing that we appreciate in the city of Sioux Falls, it's some civic pride. It's a really good investment. And I hope someday we get this uh, done for the people that we serve. More quality of life investments. I'm not going to talk a lot about it. Main Avenue. You know, Phillips Avenue is just pumping. Main Avenue is the next big thing. Uh, Falls Park West, that's going to be a lot of fun. That's where the Levitt Pavilion is going to go. Again, the event center is there. This Levitt Pavilion will be downtown's event center, and you're going to love it. Uh, and then he has phase three of the River Greenway. That'll be fun to, to see happen as well. And then uh, we did purchase 10 acres of land. Again, very controversial topic among some of the people here at the Democratic Forum. I get it. About $35 million of federal taxpayer dollars, United States citizens invested in your city to make this happen. It's 10 acres. Plenty of uh, big dreams will happen. Uh, if anything, uh, there, there will be no buildings up by the time I'm done being your mayor. But I would actually like to at least put a shovel in the ground and kind of kick it off. Uh, I would. Uh, if you think the event center almost killed me, <laughs> this one truly almost got me. Uh, I don't give up on mold, on must, on much. I don't. You, I think you're, some of you like that, some of you don't like it. Uh, I don't give up on much. This was one project, one. I almost gave up on this one. Uh, I mean, negotiating with uh, the railroads, uh, which are stronger than uh, a Major League Baseball, baseball, by the way, they're Phillies fan. Uh, trying to navigate the waters of you know, the federal government, the state government, uh, EPA, the, it, it was just a battle. Uh, but ultimately, again, I think that government can get stuff done. Uh, I wish that ultimately someone would write a book on this, uh, but in most cases, folks would have given up on this thing a long time ago. Um, in fact, some did. Uh, I didn't. There were some folks that you, you just should celebrate and cheer at the highest level. They, they didn't, and ultimately, we got it done. And this will be, in my mind, the biggest thing that has happened in Sioux Falls, maybe in our history, because it's going to completely change the dynamics of our downtown. It is. It's going to be phenomenal. Um, and so, you know, stay tuned. Uh, I'm going to end here, and then I want to open up for questions, and, and thank you for being so, so you know, engaged and listening. I appreciate it. This is an interesting one, too. Okay, we've got the International Guard here, one of the strongest in all of America. We, we actually have F-16 fighter jets that fly in and out of, of our city all the time. 
Okay, um, right now in collaboration, uh, and you see I notice I use that word quite a bit because it's real. If you're gonna get anything done, you do have to work as a team. But we are collaboratively working with the governor, uh, working with our, our uh, uh, DC delegation, working with the, the Air Force, the Air National Guard, uh, the business community, uh, this mayor, that council. Uh, we are working in collaboration to try to bring the F-35 fighter jets to Sioux Falls. And uh, I don't want to be overconfident, okay? Don't, don't, don't want to. But we like our chances. We like our chances. We've got a, uh, uh, we've got a, uh, a base that is so strong, so uh, well-recognized. Um, uh, Senator Thune, uh, Senator Rounds, uh, Representative Noam, Governor Dugard, Mayor Huther, the council, and others. We are working as a team, whether you like it or not. And I like it. We are working as a team to try to get these F-35s here in the city of Sioux Falls. And uh, we'll see what happens, okay? Uh, and then uh, I just want to keep getting, I want to keep getting uh, stuff done. Uh, I've got stuff in quotes. Uh, you can put any word in there that you want, okay? Uh, stuff seems to be the safest one. Uh, but you know me, I'm not, I'm not always the, the safest. So, uh, again, thanks for letting me come here today. I, I don't know how much time I have, Tom. A minute? Tim, okay, great, great, great. Uh, you don't have to, but thanks for trying to applaud, so I appreciate it. Um, folks, I'm here for you. So, I mean, it's been two years since I've been here. Use me, abuse me. What, what do you, thank you. Go ahead, thank you. Um, I think your terms have been um, characterized both by controversy and when you stub your toe, but much larger than that are the things that you've supported and gotten to come. And there is so much energy in this town. And downtown has <clears throat> transformed itself from the days when you couldn't drive a car down Phillips. Um, so I am real proud to invite people here and show off the city. It's easy to show off the city. And uh, beyond that, it's the greatest snow rainbow <laughs> thank you, thank you, and that was the, uh, thank you. Sir. For downtown residents, yes. railroad. Yes. Is there any possibility that all diamonds are going to come downtown? Okay, uh, the question was, insert your name please. Charles. Charles. Charles asks, hey mayor, any chance we can get a, a, a ballpark downtown, baseball? Yeah. Uh, and, and, and again, I, I've only got a year and a half to go. Um, but I do not support that, and I've lived in, in cities where they had downtown, uh, uh, ballparks in their downtown. I personally don't support it because I don't think it would be a good, a good use of the taxpayer dollar. The, the Canary Stadium that we have is a really, really good stadium. I think it's in a great location. I think it works in well with uh, all the other uh, infrastructure that we have out there. Um, and, and, I, I, and, and again, I think that once you see the, the Levitt Pavilion, which will be done in about 2018, 2019. Charles, I think you're gonna find that you're gonna have plenty to do in the summer. Uh, you're gonna have all kinds of activity, and I think you're really gonna enjoy the love it. And then if you wanna hit a Canaries game, you can do that too. Um, tearing, you know, people say, well, but Mayor, it'll create more parking. Wow, that's pretty expensive parking. Uh, it is, and so, Charles, uh, we may have to agree to disagree on this one. I don't know where you stand, but I personally would not recommend it at all. Uh, I don't think it's a good investment, but but thank you. Thank you. I'm asked that question quite often. Yes? I was wondering, how can we say at the Lacey Farm? Yes. Uh, well, you know, I, 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 I think that, I, I don't know if anybody, I don't know, I mean, she doesn't want to save it. Uh, she's moving on. She's made a decision in, uh, in, in her own, Life that you know she want. You're talking about the uh, the property there. Right. But yes. I'm not going to save the property and maybe make it into a park, into a, an agricultural. Yeah. I mean, yeah. farming is how this community started. Well, yeah, but uh, it's a very valuable mm -hmm. piece of land. Uh, it's a private. It's privately owned. Uh, the person who wants to, you know, sell it. Uh, there's a developer who wants to utilize that. And I think what the council is trying to do right now is to figure out what is. Uh, you know, some common ground to, to um, maximize that land as well as respect uh, the property that is, and the, and the people around it. 
Um, so, you know, I don't know if saving Lacey uh, Farms or that property is, is uh, kind of the, the goal right now, uh, but I think finding some balance is the goal. Uh, and uh, that's what uh, uh, the planning and zoning team, the developer, the owner, and the citizens around there are trying to, to accomplish. And, and the council too, sorry if I didn't say it. Uh, yes? Um, how do you prepare our technical institute to community colleges? No, I do. I, I think it's, it's probably the closest thing that we've got. Um, but it is, they, technical schools are really uh, specialized in certain uh, you know, technical functions or, or roles. And uh, a community college is a little bit more broad. Um, and, and I think it's kind of a jumping off point for folks who wanna you know, get into a, 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 a post high school graduate degree and maybe kind of then see if, if, if that's what they wanna do and then maybe move on for more. And that's actually what the, uh, the group is working on now. They want to create a two-year program that if, it, if they pass it and if they like it, they can actually then convert it into a four-year program. Uh, I think the technical schools are kind of the closest thing that we've got. Now, that's a great question. Yes? What's your opinion on the um, controversial home in the Park? Well, <laughs> uh, yeah. and, and I, have to be, I have to be cautious in my comments because there is a lawsuit going on, okay? So yeah. please, I don't know if you heard that. There's a lawsuit going on, and one of the parties in the lawsuit is the city of Sioux Falls. And I am the chief, you know, I'm the, the strong mayor of the city of Sioux Falls, or the chief executive officer of that government. So I'm not trying to evade your question, I'm not, uh, but we are being sued, so there's not much I can say, okay? Uh, so uh, I'm you know, sorry about that. Uh, but I, I do think that ultimately it, it's gonna, there's gonna be a, a, a resolution. There will be. Uh, you know, and, and I think that that's why occasionally you've got a, kind of these courts of law. Uh, and sometimes when, when you can't find a common ground, uh, then you go to the courts. So yes. And, uh, yes, sir. In that new city building that you want. Yes. Is there anything about getting the county you bet. If the county down the road says we need something, yes. Did you end up getting stuck twice to Great job. Uh, insert your first name, please. Eli. Eli. Eli said, "Hey, Mayor, uh, this building that you're talking about, is there any talk about you know the county and some collaboration effort there?" Yes, sir. Not only the county, Minnehaha County, but also Lincoln County and and others like that. And that's one thing about this building is that there is uh, not only space. To grow into now but there's space for generations to come as well as there is the opportunity to collaborate as well uh, with other government entities such as Lincoln County, Minnehaha County, whatever it would be. So the answer to that is yes. Yes. Sir. Can you explain the negative correlation between the record growth that we have and the sales tax revenue? Well I, I don't think there is a negative correlation. Uh, I think that I think that uh, in fact I think they're actually I, I don't know if they're playing a role together. I don't, I don't think they're connected. Uh, we actually have positive sales tax revenue. We do. We've got growth in terms of our sales tax revenue. I think that's one of the, uh, the, probably one of the more disappointing things that happens when you're the mayor or when you're in this government <coughs> gig. You know, folks can say something one way and then it does create a firestorm of, oh my gosh. And one of the things that has been created is that our sales tax revenues are actually dropping or decreasing. They're not. They're actually growing. Now, to be, to be fair, uh, in the budget last year, we, were, we, were, we had uh, set a, a plan that they would grow at 6%. And they're not growing at 6 right now. They're growing at about 4 okay? Uh, uh, but here's what I think may be happening. And again, I've not done any analysis. I don't... I, I, this is just gut. Um, I do think that there are a couple of things that we should be watching right now in the city of Sioux Falls, and that is what happens to the ag community, okay, over the next six months to a year. Folks, we should all be praying for rain. We should. You know, first there was too much rain, now there's not enough. Uh, we need to pray for rain. Uh, because, folks, you have to understand, again, that, and, and this will be the last time I lift up the chair, I promise. 
the foundation of Sioux Falls is thank you it's agriculture it is it's agriculture it has been and it always will be we have to cheer on these farmers and ranchers in small towns because if they do well they come into our town and they spend money they buy new trucks they come to the event center they do all that stuff that is one thing that we really have to watch farm prices are down uh, 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 input prices are up uh, 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 land prices are dropping uh, so those are some of those things uh, Amanda where's Amanda I saw her she was in here Amanda that we have to start watching there's another one and and this is the one that wow it just kind of I don't know if it crept up on us but it's real and it is take a guess what how, how are people buying stuff now online online internet sales internet sales that impacts your and mine sorry uh, it, sales tax revenues and folks this is South Dakota. You know how we pay for stuff here. How do we do it? There's only, only two ways. Property taxes and sales taxes. That's it. So we do have to watch these uh, online sales and things like that. Thank you. Great question. Great. Yes. When is Sioux Falls going to catch up with Minnesota and pass legislation to protect the civil rights of its gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender citizens? Well, I, I think that... I think that um, we will catch up, and I think that we are catching up. At a minimum, we're having a dialogue about it, okay? And, and, and I think that that's, 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 that's a step. Um, I mean, I've lived in South Dakota almost all my life. I left for, for about 10 years. Um, we are actually talking about it now, and I think it's been a civil dialogue for the, for the most part. Uh, you know, it, it, in city government, I, I signed an executive order that protects everybody. Uh, in terms of getting a job or working within the city of Sioux Falls. And that's everybody. Uh, it's race, it's creed, it's color, it's sexual orientation. It is what it is. It's everybody, okay? Now, the, the national debate, the state debate, and all that, I, I can't speak to that. I'm your mayor, okay? We've got counselors here. They, they work on city policy. At a minimum, we're having a dialogue, uh, and I think that I think that progress is being made. I, I do. Um, now, uh, I, I do think though that the federal government ultimately is going to be the uh, probably the the strongest force to make it happen everywhere, including South Dakota and Sioux Falls. I, I don't know if that's fair or not. Uh, yes, thank you. Welcome. Well, thanks for standing. Great. Yeah. Tell me your name, please. My name's Raina, but everyone calls me Boots. If you can take my name, look at my feet. All right. <laughs> um, as you guys know, I'm the youth director for the Center for Equality. I work in youth suicide prevention. So I want to speak on a moment on behalf of millennials. But first, I want to say the way, the way we make that happen is get Marty Jackie to leave. <laughs> <laughs> yes. On top of that, uh, the points that you made about millennials are very factual. The truth about millennials is that we recognize what our, our older generations have gone through. So we are looking at this more of a mental health, spiritual health when it comes to happiness in the workplace, yeah. which is why we are so high demanding about the quality of life in our workplace. Yeah. And uh, with that being said, one of the things that you talked about with community college is something that we very much back because we need two-year degrees and certifications yes. to be able to take care of our aging populations. You don't need a bachelor's degree to, to uh, take care of someone in a, in a what you need is two-year certifications and outside of Globe University, there's really not that many options to go ahead and get that certification, which means that millennials are working in lower paid jobs where they could be making $15 an hour and a living wage. So um, I want to see more work on community colleges, and I want to thank you for everything you've done on the city, city, city level to support the LGBT. You're welcome. You've been a wonderful backer. You're welcome. <laughs> Boots, you're welcome. My, well, again, not, some of you are, you know my background, others don't. Boots, uh, uh, my mom was uh, the head nurse at the Human Services Center. In the olden days, we called it the state hospital, okay? And so my, uh, my dad, prior to him passing away, uh, my dad would walk into a room and he wanted to, you know, touch everybody and hug everybody and, and get to know them and, and know their story. That was my dad, and so you probably can get a flavor of that. My mom wanted to save everybody and wanted to help everybody. 
and I wanted to care for everybody. That's how she taught us. And uh, that is the way that, that I am trying to be. Uh, and I mean it sincerely. I want to help everybody. I do. I do. Sadly. Well, but, but Boots, not everybody agrees with that. Not everybody agrees with it. And, and, and until you're in this mayor's gig, or until you're in the city council gig, you have to understand something, folks. The hardest thing is that I want to help everybody. I mean, I do. But the problem is, it, it, you, there's not, you can't wave pixie dust out there and then just have a bunch of money come in and then save the world like my mom wants me to. You gotta pay for this stuff. And, and that's the battle. And that's what Councilor Neitzer, Councilor Staley, myself and others, where we have this battle because we wanna do everything for everybody and you just can't. You just can't. And then all of a sudden, you get a reputation, oh, you don't care about the little guy, Mayor, or you're wearing a fancy suit, so you're not as good. You're, you, you, you really have no connection to, to poor people or lesbian people or black people or people who are blind or people in wheelchairs. Trump is going to get it all done. They don't have a clue. <laughs> uh, they don't have a clue. I actually really I, I got a connection with all those, and I'm excited about it. Boots, I am gonna, you're going to get mad. Okay, get ready. Democratic Forum, because I'm going to leave you and you're going to be mad at me. Boots, you said something about, uh, you know, the way you'll get it done is just get rid of uh, Marty Jackley. Actually, that, that's not the way you're going to get it done. It's not. It's not. The way you're going to get things done in government, and you saw it with Governor Dugard when it came to the funding of, of education and, and trying to get more money for our teachers, okay? What it's going to take is it's going to actually it's going to take someone who's willing to lead, who's willing to take all the hits that come along the way, all the naysayers, all the critics, all the haters, all the people who will say whatever they want to say online or in blogs or whatever it would be, just to bring you down. It's going to take someone to lead, and then ultimately, you know what you have to do? And get ready here, Councillor Neitzer and Councillor Staley. Here's what you have to do. You actually have to work as a team, and you have to find common ground, and you have to ultimately get enough votes to pass this stuff, like Governor Dugard did. And it is so hard. It is so hard. And so I, I'm not trying to defend um, a, Attorney General uh, Jackley, but I, I, it's not as easy boots as you, you, you I, I, and I, I know you weren't saying it was easy, but it is, it's a beast of a battle. It is, it's a, this government thing, and, and I wanna thank you, it is so hard, but I love it. <laughs> I love it. Thank you all. Thank you. Don't come back now, here. What kind of morons run this outfit?